What up, what up, Salvador Braven here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Dude is Fine YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about crowdfunding. And specifically today, oh man, we are getting into some mega news when it comes to the shifting equity crowdfunding landscape. So we're going to be talking about a couple of different announcements here. Number one, how Cedars, which is a UK-based equity crowdfunding website, actually hit two billion in funds raised. And it was actually dramatically accelerating, which to me is creating this swelling tide, this massive wave, which if you're not aware of equity crowdfunding, you definitely should be aware by the end of this video, in addition to how they're acquired by another equity crowdfunding platform based in the United States for a hundred million dollars. Now, this actual equity crowdfunding platform as well is gobbling up a lot of competition, which I don't think a lot of people are aware of. We're talking about a lot of different news announcements today, what this means for you, what are the implications, and for those of you that do want to get started with an equity crowdfunding raise, I'm going to be sharing with you a couple of messages related to that in today's YouTube video. All right, brother, wherever it is that you are hailing in from, um, I really view it as my ethical duty, as my mission to inform you about the big things that are happening in this particular industry because sometimes you just don't know what's going on. And when you do are informed, you understand what's going on, you understand the shifting landscape, which is crowdfunding, you can actually take advantage of these opportunities, right? It's hard for you to really participate in the gold rush if you don't know what is even happening when it comes to that. If you don't know that a gold rush is happening, if you don't even know where California is, right? Back in the day, it was hard for you to participate in the gold rush. So whenever I see something where I see a massive frenzy, a new trend, something is growing that most people aren't aware of, I try to hop on that as quickly as possible. I've done that with Kickstarter. I've done that with uh, real estate crowdfunding when I was the first to write a book on this particular subject before anyone knew what it was. I've done this with nonprofit crowdfunding and now I am doing this as well with equity crowdfunding, which I've also written a book on, which I'm also educating about publicly before anyone else's, right? So today I want to talk about this. I really want to get into this and dissect it for you. I really want to start with Cedars, which is an equity crowdfunding website that's out there that has now hit the $2 billion mark when it comes to funding on their platform. So this is a recent announcement that Cedars actually put out there on their blog. So I'm we'll gonna try to have some of this appear on the screen as well. So basically, um, Cedars is a 10 year old crowdfunding website. It took a long time for equity crowdfunding to get started. Uh, and it took them actually eight years in order to hit 1 billion pounds when it comes to getting their first billion with crowdfunding. But as you know, as they say, the first billion is the easiest, right? So these guys, they ended up hitting 2 billion, another billion, additional billion. They did this in two years after hitting their first milestone. Think about that. It took them eight years to hit the first billion. It took them two years to hit the second billion. What does that mean? That means dramatic acceleration of growth. So they were actually um, reporting this on their blog. Now this is over the course of 1,722 deals which they've actually made available on their platform. People that are raising money, uh, investors coming from 90 different countries to participate in these private ventures. This is, you know, more people that are, are for example, retail investors. They're not necessarily professional VCs. These are people that are investing in equity crowdfunding campaigns. So this is a huge announcement. And to me, one of the big reasons why, uh, you know, everyone should be aware of the fact that equity crowdfunding is taking off. This thing is going bananas and you should be aware of this. So you can check out a little bit more of this announcement on your own time, but it really is looking like an exponential growth curve. Um, so a couple of different campaigns, standout campaigns. Um, one would be this, and this was obviously cho chosen by the Cedars team. So this is a fastest growing plant-based meat brand in the UK, grossing 333% year over year. They raised 6 million plus pounds from over 2,907 investors. Another is Chapel Down. Chapel Down raised over 6 million 900K for more than 4,000 investors. This is English sparkling wine wine that's on the rise, uh, trampling down. Another is Revolut, and I might be mispronouncing that, Revolut. Uh, this is a leading UK fintech uh, where they basically have a digital bank offering. They ended up doing a Cedars campaign and they raised over 3,900,000 pounds viewing this equity crafting campaign for more than 4,260 investors. In addition, there is a growing secondary market on Cedars. So this is something we're also beginning to see more of in the United States, which is where I am based. I'm based in Miami, Florida. So Cedars, their secondary market continues to grow from strength to strength. Since launching in 2017, they facilitated 50,000 transactions worth $21 million. There've been over 700 companies traded on the secondary market to date, and over 200 currently traded each month. Lastly, as part of this mega announcement, then we're gonna dissect it a tiny bit. Um, they actually opened this up to VC funds. So in 2021, uh, they introduced the Venture Fund LP opportunities onto the platform, starting with a partnership with Passion Capital for its third fund. This move is a true step for changing the industry. Basically, Cedars, investors hit 
target in just 20 minutes, showing the pent up demand for access to these investment vehicles previously out of reach to everyday investors. After the success of their first round, we've just launched the Super Seed Fund 2 on the platform for high net worth and sophisticated investors. Find out more and you can learn more on their fundraising page. Basically, retail investors are able to access VC funds and invest in that. How cool is that? And in addition, they're opening up obviously to sophisticated investors and high net worth individuals, AKA accredited investors. They're announcing another fund. So to me, Cedars is finding ways to diversify the offering when it comes to their investor base. So let's dissect this a tiny bit before I get to another huge announcement. So first of all, um, what you should be aware of is that this is accelerating and it's accelerating across the board. It's not just happening in the UK. It's also happening in the United States. It's also happening around the world. We're seeing this ability for retail investors to get involved and invest in startup companies and more and more retail investors are doing that. And these platforms are seeing massive, massive pent up growth with the ability to invest in these alternative style investments. The second thing we're seeing is that retail investors are beginning to participate in asset classes, which previously they could not do. And to be able to participate in a VC fund, that is so cool. And that's something like you think more of like a hedge fund, right? To be able to do. In addition, we're seeing secondary marketplaces beginning to actually form around these particular crowdfunding platforms. Now, for example, Start Engine is one that I think of in the United States that has a secondary market. Cedars as well has a secondary market. And you heard a little bit of the data that's going and coming forth from that secondary market. So the more that we see companies doing mini IPOs or raising money using regulation crowdfunding, the more we're also going to see the growth of secondary markets, right? Because in the same way, the stock market, right? We have an initial public offering. The stock market is really just a secondary market. People are trading existing shares of companies. The same thing is going to happen over time with these startup companies that are raising money on equity crowdfunding portals. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrite is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrite today. Link in the description. Okay, the second big announcement, which you should be aware of, and I'm kind of laying a little bit of the puzzle pieces for you so that you can put these together and really understand why equity crowdfunding is exploding and hopefully you decide to actually launch a campaign as well, right? Doing an equity crowdfunding raise is actually not as complicated as you might think, but Republic.co, Republic, which is one of the biggest crowdfunding platforms out there in the United States, has also been gobbling up a lot of different competitors in the space. And one of those is Cedars. So I believe they're currently in process when it comes to doing the acquisition, but they purchased Cedars for an estimated $100 million to be able to expand their footprint outside of the United States. So this is basically on the heels of Republic's massive Series B funding round and which they've now taken that capital and they're distributing that and they're really growing their base when it comes to their base of investors, their base of companies, all of that. So originally, I believe Crowdcube was actually trying to acquire or merge with Sears, but there was something related to the UK regulations that was not allowing that to happen. But now this is definitely basically going forward in process when it comes to um, Republic actually acquiring Sears. And think about that. Now they have a major crowdfunding website in the United States and they're also going to have one when it comes to the UK. Here is a great quote from Kendrick, who is Republic's founder and CEO. We knew international expansion was necessary to achieve cross-borders participation. With Cedars, we anticipate further developing the strengths of both companies from retail, secondary crypto, and communities to create a clear industry leader. Jeff Kalinske, the CEO of Cedars, said, Cedars' ambition has always been built to build a global private equity marketplace. This transaction is a natural development of our partnership with Republic to achieve and go beyond that ambition. To cut through all the mumbo jumbo, they're like, dude, we want to dominate the world. Let's team up and also, you know, let's really make it so that we are the leader in this space. To me, Republic is trying to grow aggressively. And you know, that's really referenced in April when they actually announced um, their long anticipated expansion into Asia. So the Republic Asia expansion was originally reported in a release that included a report that the company was also pursuing a minority investment in Corbid, a licensed crypto exchange in Korea. Youngro Lee, COO of Republic, um, will also be head of Republic Asia. And he quoted this, uh, we believe it is critical to have a meaningful presence in Asia, which covers 60% of the world's population. Asia is quickly becoming the center of technological development and innovation with active local government support and increasingly investor-friendly 
market environment. In particular, fintech and blockchain related services have been seeing tremendous growth in APAC, especially when it comes to innovation, capital deployment, and broad market adoption. In addition to this news, Republic is also working with or in partnership with Together Apps, a licensed peer to peer investment platform in Korea. And in addition, Republic Asia entered into a strategic partnership with Cube Entertainment, a Korean music and entertainment company providing access to a vertical with strong potential in a South Korean Asian market. So Republic is basically seeing the potential of global crowdfunding domination when it comes to equity crowdfunding and really making sure that not only do they have a hub when it comes to different types of alternative asset classes, but also they are engaging different geographic regions because it's very difficult to have global domination when you're just based in the United States. So they've really identified that in my opinion. Another great quote came from Lee who actually founded NextSeed, a crowdfunding platform acquired by Republic and said, we are returning to Asia, bringing back everything we've learned the hard way and even more crazier ideas but this time we have a few more believers and a lot more firepower this is on the heels of another acquisition that republic recently did when it comes to aurora project which is an equity crowdfunding uh, marketing agency specifically based for republic which they recently acquired so the quote here from TechCrunch: uh off the heels of 150 million series b fundraise New York-based investing platform Republic has acquired Aurora Project, an equity crowdfunding media agency that helps startups create and launch campaigns. Republic, which is now five years old, is best known for facilitating crowdfunding campaigns for startups and small businesses under Reg CF, a rule that allows non-accredited investors to participate in private funding rounds. So let's kind of dissect what this means for you and a little bit of that news. So I know that I'm throwing a lot your way, but I really want to demonstrate kind of, like I said, this shifting equity crowdfunding landscape. So the time recording this video, WeFunder is obviously the big when it comes to uh, regulation crowdfunding campaigns that are out there. We're also seeing Start Engine now partnering with Indiegogo, which I covered in another YouTube video. We're seeing Republic having global expansion based off of the heels of a Series B, a massive Series B funding round, going out there, acquiring other platforms, going out there, taking partnerships with other platforms as well out there outside of the United States, and also even acquiring uh, marketing agencies and media companies in the space to really kind of you know create the foothold when it comes to being the go-to who are being the strongest leader with equity crowdfunding and alternative ways of raising money. To me, one of the biggest differences is really what the platform is going to specialize in. So for example, if Republic gets more involved in real estate or more involved in crypto, I do think that's gonna differentiate them a lot from many of the other platforms that are out there, but that also gonna dilute their ability to run effective campaigns in the core categories, for example, software startup or food-based startups. That's really the question in my opinion. In addition, as we saw with the real estate crowdfunding industry, uh, what ended up happening was it kind of moved away from more of the traditional view of real estate crowdfunding, be able to invest in parts like their properties, right? And kind of having a very small share of ownership in, in many different, in these different properties to more of like a fund based model. And based on what I'm seeing as well, when it comes to Cedars, that might end up happening with Republic. It also might not. So that'd be something to look out for is, are they beginning to create alternative investment funds where you can just basically kind of get a diversified investment in many different startup companies, almost in the same way that like, you know, a hedge fund or a VC might invest in like 10 different companies, right? Are they going to create a portfolio? portfolio around that or portfolio where you can then invest in venture capital funds in the way that Cedars did, right? So there's a lot of different questions here. Um, what does this mean for you? What this means is that if you are someone who is looking to raise capital for your business, this is literally the easiest time in the history of the planet to do it. In addition, you don't even necessarily need, you know, a massive track when it comes to having, you know, financials for that company. Many companies are pre-revenue that are raising money when it comes to doing a regulation crowdfunding campaign. I really think that you should think about this carefully Carefully. And while there is some red tape that you maybe have to get through when it comes to doing a form C and figuring out things when it comes to general solicitation and like, what is this whole test the waters thing? What is the lead investor? What is an SPV? All those different terms. There are people out there that can help you through this exact process. So if that sounds interesting to you, if you want to kind of, you know, at least you know, sink your teeth into this whole regulation crowdfunding thing, if you want to launch a campaign, if you want to get advice when it comes to what do you have to do every step of the way and really have your hand held throughout this process, particularly when it comes to the marketing, how do you get investors to participate? How do you get them to show up? You should definitely book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me down below. That coaching call is literally the best investment that you can make when it comes to doing a regulation crowdfunding campaign or doing a raise of any kind for your startup company. Even discuss, is this something that is worth your time? Should you be even thinking about this? Should this be on your radar? Should you be doing another type of crowdfunding like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, or something else that's out there? You can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me down below and we can discuss that. In addition, if you want to continue your experience of educating yourself and learning and really just absorbing as much information as possible, I got other two great resources for you. Um, one is my Equity uh, Crowdfunding Explained audiobook, which is available on Audible, which I will link up down below. 
below. In addition, I got a free course on equity crowdfunding, which you can check out down below. And I think I'm gonna be putting out more training in the future as well. So make sure you stay tuned, get on one of those lists, get on my free equity crafting course list, because I probably would announce it there if I do anything more in this realm when it comes to providing valuable training for you, making this process easier, making this not just in the realm of you know big boardrooms where people who understand very fancy, sophisticated finance terms are trying to spin you and make sure that you don't understand this, right? I really wanna make sure that this is transparent for you, that you understand what you're doing. And that way you can actually not only have this be something that's good for the platform that you're raising money, right? but also good for you, good for the business, good for the vision that you have. Make sure that you impact the world, that you build a massive base of employees that are also working towards the same vision that you have. At the end of the day, I work for founders, I work for creators, and hopefully that from this video, you at least have a sense that this is an opportunity, this is happening, and whether or not you decide to get involved, whether or not you decide to participate is really up to you. Hope you enjoyed this news style video, and if you did, give me a thumbs up, let me know, come subscribe to this content, um, this channel if you want more content, just like this leave a comment down below if you do have a thought or a question or provoke something in your mind i'll do my best to include most of the sources that i talked about in this video in the description down below but that being said hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you next time